Hello, my beautiful friends. Welcome back to another video. So today I am doing a full mixing video on the pearl cell technique per a request of a viewer. And I was also inspired by a video that Sarah Taylor did recently. So if you don't know who she is, check her out. I'll link her in the description. So I have this 18 inch round here. We're going to mix up some paint. I'm going to show you how to do it. And uh, yeah, let's get started. So I kind of skimmed over the supplies you use. Let me just go over them really quickly. You need some pouring medium. One thing you do not see on the table right now is flow trawls. The jug is big. Can't really fit it in the screen here, but here it is. So some pouring medium, some flow trawl, some satin enamels, some paints, preferably all the same body type. And when I say body type, I know that confuses some people. There are different consistencies of paint that are in the tube. I'm not talking about when you mix them. These Liquitex, Grumbacher, Pebio, um, Amsterdam, those are all a medium consistency paint in the tube. They have body to them. Whereas something like one of these in the bottles, it's a fluid paint. It flows out of the bottle. It's a more thinner consistency. So the paints I chose are all a medium body paint. The deco art and the, the color shift are a little slightly thinner, but they can still kind of qualify as a medium body paint, okay? Because they have the mica in it and the mica thickens it up. But I wanted to do this purposely because I want to be able to give measurements for products that I know a lot of people use, all right? And I... By using the same consistency paints, I'll be able to key in on pretty much exact measurements. If you're using same style of paint, the, the medium body, and if you're using the same size cup, okay? So this is a three ounce cup, just so you know. I'm going to talk about parts, but I'm going to simplify it for you because a lot of people don't understand what, you know, parts means or what percentages are. They like to use measurements like teaspoons and tablespoons, but I'm going to try to simplify that for you. So I'm, I'm trying to really, really break it down here. Okay. So you're going to need some water, some satin enamels, as I said, some paints. I'm working on an 18 inch round that I bought at Home Depot. My Home Depot sell the, sells these MDF rounds. My plan is to turn this into a clock afterwards once it dries. Uh, so it's a really nice size. Uh, it's a quarter inch, I believe. So let me clear this out of the way and really pull up my sleeves and get into this with you. If, however, you know how to do this pour and you just want to see some painting, fast forward until you see me putting some white paint down on the canvas, okay? So when it comes to understanding measuring and, and parts or percentages, you have to look at it this way. When you hear the word part, one part paint, two parts flow trial, a cup as a whole cup is 100% a cup, okay? This cup here, 100% of a cup, it's, a, it's an item. It's a whole thing. Therefore, it is 100%. So depending on the amount of paint that you need to make, your measurements change, right? I can tell you I used one part paint, two parts flow trial. The amount is going to totally differ depending on the size cup you're using. So for my white base paint, I need a lot of paint. So I'm going to have to make a big cupful. 
it is going to require to fill up this big cup and I'm eyeballing these amounts, okay? I'm going to need two parts paint to three parts Floetrol to one part of the GAC to half a part of the pouring medium, half a part of the enamel, right? Uh, recipe is from Sarah Taylor's video. So that means to make a big cup of white paint, you know, you got to kind of use common sense. It's calling for two parts white paint. So that means I'm going to use two full cups of the white paint, etc., with the rest of the ingredients. But what if I needed to make a small cup of paint? Well, that's where you have to break your cup down, okay? So, again, this is a whole item, 100%. So you need to divide it into four equal sections. Not that this is very equal, <laughs> but you get the gist. So this would be one part, two parts, three parts, Four parts. Four parts equal a whole. 100%. If somebody says I used 25% Floetrol, that would be only this much right here. Okay? 25%. Two parts would be 50%. Three parts would be 75%. Four parts would be 100%, okay? So if a, an artist says I used a 50-50 mix, that means they use 50% of, of paint and 50% of the other product, whatever they mention. But again, you have to remember in quantity wise, now if that artist said I used 50% paint, and 50% Floetrol in a cup this size, that would be this much paint, not that you can see that, and this much Floetrol, okay? So what I'm going to do here today is I am going to break it down for you according to the recipe. I need to first make a big cup of white paint, so we're going to have to use more product, all right? So it calls for two parts white paint. So into this cup right here, two parts, whole cup is a part. In this case, I'm going to fill it up two times and dump it into my cup over here. And that's going to qualify us to have two parts white paint. All right. We're using this little cup as our measuring cup. Again, if you, you need less paint, which I do need less paint for all the colors, we're going to be just using the smaller cup. But in this case, we're using the smaller cup to fill the bigger cup. <laughs> okay. So there's one part paint. Now I need to do another one, full cup. And you know what? You can always store your paints away, your white and your black. If you make way too much, you're, we always use those two colors and pouring. And the other ones, you know, you could buy the Loli Vefi bottles to store them. Especially if you're doing a lot of Dutch pours, they're great to store the colors in those. There is a discount in the description for anybody interested. And they just added on a really, a 16 ounce bottle. So we got these. Now, these are the ones that I like. These are considered the mini, I believe. And I think they're like a dollar 25 each. And like I said, there's a coupon code down there. So now I have my two parts of white paint. The next thing I need is three parts of Floetrol. I'm going to take the same cup that I just used for my white paint 
and I'm going to fill it up three times. Now the important part of this video is going to be the water because the secret to this uh, technique is having the correct amount of water in there and I am going to measure this for you. So if by any chance you have these ingredients and are struggling, if you follow this using the same brands, doesn't have to be the same colors, just the same brand, Liquitex or Artist Loft. People ask me about Master's Touch, and I'm going to tell you that I don't use that very often. I have not had good success with that brand paint. I don't know what it is. Um, I think there's a little bit of clumps in this. I should be straining it, but for sakes of the video, I'm not going to. So that's two parts. And then we need one more to equal our three parts. All right, I'll put that right over there. So there's the three parts of that. Now we need one whole part, I believe, of the GAC 800. Now I don't know how important this really is for this uh, technique. I haven't had time to test out um, not using it to see if there's any difference, but this is really just a an extender for pouring. Believe it or not, this was Golden's original brand of a pouring medium. They just didn't market it really well. So, you know, it, it helps with cracking and stuff like that, but the paints, I've never really had a problem with paints cracking, especially on a cloud pour or this technique here. So I'm going to fill up my cart cup because we need one part of this. And the part measurement we're using is a hole because we're making the big cup full and put that in there. As I was saying, um, if you want to really follow along, I suggest having the GAC 800 because like I said, I don't know what it adds or what it doesn't. At this point, I haven't tried doing it for a long time without having that GAC. All right, so next up, we need a half of a part of pouring medium and a half a part of satin enamel. Now, since our cup is one whole part, we need to fill this half of the way with pouring medium and half of the way with satin enamels because that measurement is half a part. Now I have some pouring medium here in a bottle before I open my brand new one. Tough to get that one off. So here's half a part of Liquitex pouring medium. Fill it right up to the two line. Dump it in. And then a half a part of the satin enamels. You want to mix this stuff up whenever you use it because it does settle and get kind of funky. Let's give it a good little whipping. Show it who's boss. All right, there's my half a part of the satin enamels. So now we're going to take that, dump it in, and this color is done. We're going to give it a good stir and move on to our color colors. Now this batch right here that you just made is going to be the paint that you put on your base that you pour your colors on top of. 
Um, you can also use this for a cloud pour where you just put a little bit in between your colors to get that cloudy effect, which is, you know, a whole different technique than what we're talking about today. But you really want to mix this up good. And if you want to be able to use this for both techniques, do not add the water yet. Pour some, however much you need, into another cup for this technique, which is what I'm going to do, and then save the rest for the cloud pour, because for the cloud pour, this is the perfect consistency. You don't have to add water. For the pearl pour, you do, all right? So that's the most important part of this right now that's coming up is the water. I decided to speed this up because it was an extremely long video. So for the water part, I ended up adding two ounces of water into this white. But don't worry, at the end of the video, I took exact measurements in both tablespoons and in ounces. And I put a picture of them up at the end of the video for you to write down the exact recipe. Here we go. Really runny. Okay. So that's the white base paint. Now let's move on to the colors. So the little cup is our measuring device. All right. Because we don't need a lot of color. So when you hear one part paint to a half a part of flow trial, that means however much paint you put in this cup, you're going to put half that amount of Floetrol in. So for example, into this cup, and I will show you how much is in there. Okay. Here's how deep it is. It's like right there. So now, when I take my Floetrol, okay, I'm gonna pour it in till it's half, like half this width. So I'll put it in the cup, like right up to here. Oops, sorry. So right up to here. Half of the width of the paint in the cup, fill with Floetrol. Or if it's easier for you, you know, this is the measurement that we're using for the paint, which is probably a quarter cup, right? So if this is considered now one part, where would a half a part be? Right here. So take your flow trawl and fill it up to this line. So you're going to dump that into the cup and then you're going to add just a little splash of pouring medium. Uh, I figured eight drops of pouring medium. Again, full recipe is at the end. All right. So this next part of the video to me is the most important part of them all because I'm a firm believer that as long as you use some of all the correct products that you'll get the, re the effects that you're looking for. The consistency is key, okay? Not so much how much pouring medium you use and how much flow trial. Like I said, if you add those in at any amount, chances are it's going to work. But the consistency is what screws up a lot of people. So this part specifically of this video is for Miss Shelley. I talked to her and she'd asked me about two specific colors. Now, I do not, did not have dioxazine purple, but I have prism uh, violet, which is very close to it and the same exact consistency. All Liquitex medium body paints, as long as they aren't a metallic, are all the same consistency in the, the bottle, in the tube, all right? So I'm going to, on my scale, Put on first the magenta. And I'm going to tell you, let me tear this out. 
I can tell you every one of these colors took 0 0.50 ounces of water, which equals one tablespoon of water. One tablespoon of paint, one tablespoon of, of water. That is only for a medium bodied type paint. And now let me show you the consistency of that paint. It is very runny. Now it's time to have a little fun. These are just some uh, little buckets I found at the Dollar Tree. I ran out of push pins and I had them laying around, so I figured why not? They actually worked really, really good. So four bucks, I plop my canvas right on top of them and plan to keep on using them. You want to take your white paint, put it in the center of the canvas, just dump it on and tilt it around till the entire canvas is covered. You have a couple of options for putting your paints down. You could put them down one by one, or you can combine them in a cup and pour them onto the canvas all at once. It's totally up to you. Play around, experiment, have some fun with it. Now, this next part, I actually slow down for you so that you can see how slow I'm actually tilting this paint and how much of it I am tilting off. That is key with this technique, the, the longer you stretch the paint, the more tension on the surface, the easier the satin enamels job is. And you will see that it'll start popping up pearl cells all over the place. Now, one important thing to remember, when you're tilting and you start seeing these little cells popping up, you really want to get done with your tilting quick and let it just sit because if you get a bunch of cells that pop up and you continue to tilt, it will distort those cells and they will not be nice and round. So once you start seeing them pop up, that means you've hit the right amount of tension and put the canvas down, let it sit. This is not an effect that happens immediately. It's an effect that happens over hours. So don't get discouraged. If you don't see any cells at all within the first minute, then you know your paints still aren't thin enough. But again, try to use Liquitex paints and try to use Artist Loft White for your white and follow that recipe that I have at the end of the video. You're going to see now up in the the left hand corner the white cells are popping through so this is where I put my canvas down and let it rest you want to once you put it down give it a good torch wait a couple of minutes torch it again wait a couple of more minutes tor torch it for the third time and then just leave it alone and let's see what happens to mine So this is 10 minutes later. I'm going to let it sit to do its thing. And then I will figure out if I want to do a little bit of swiping. Um, I want to see how this gold area reacts. Uh, metallics can give you a hard time in this technique. So I try to leave them out. But I wanted to try it in this one just to see. You notice that I left out that folk art color shift paint that I mixed up because I just kind of thought about it and didn't want to add the color in to begin with. And it's probably a good thing that I didn't. Because like I said, metallics can give you a hard time with this. So if you're just starting off, um, stick with some just straight opaque colors to begin with. Let's just see how it develops and yeah, we'll take it from there. However, these two areas here are very interesting. I mean, look at this. 
Now that almost looks like agate slices. I mean, these ones here. That is a very, very odd effect that I'm getting. Which I absolutely love. Love odd. And then over here are your typical pearl cells. So yeah, let me shut up. <laughs> let's, let's see what happens. Here we are next morning. The majority of it is dry already. That's one thing about the satin enamels. They, uh, it dries really, really fast. So this area is eh, pretty boring, but the rest of it I love. Now maybe I could do a little mixed media work in that section to spice it up. But again, the purpose of the video is to show you how to do this technique and that it actually works, right? <laughs> so let's not stress about colors. I hope you all are doing well. If this video helped you, please click the like. Please subscribe if you aren't already. Please check out the description for all my links, including my Amazon shop link where I have supplies needed for acrylic pouring, neatly organized in folders. And just so you know, whether you buy an art supply on Amazon or a shower curtain, if you go there through the link from my video, my channel gets credit. And that helps with supplies. Check out the Facebook group, United We Pour Fluid Art Group, where we all hang out and share our photos. Come on over and join me there. We have monthly challenges. Next month is my turn. And it's March. I'm excited because I'm a big green girl. Well, not a big green girl. I'm a big white girl. But <laughs> you get my drift. I love green. So. Come on over, sign up for a membership. It's free. And meet some folks that love the same things that you do. Make some new friends. I love you all, my friends. And until the next one, happy pouring.